Hey, beautiful people. My apologies. I was definitely going to have a special guest this evening, but something's going on with the stream. Um, I don't know, software, I guess. So I had to, I guess I have to wait 24 hours before it may be resolved. And so Kara and I rescheduled for tomorrow. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, it's going to be uh, a very, very good show. And I think a lot of things hit home for a lot of people. One story with so many different scenarios. None of them really good. But we are going to get back to that. But since I had everybody waiting, thinking something was happening, I got to make something happen. <laughs> No, um, it's not a problem because there are so many babies out there that need to be talked about. I am going to tonight speak about Arden Pepion. Someone reached out to me and asked that I help just to spread the awareness. That's what I do. I have no problem with that. So as you can see here, if I move that out of the way, Lots of stories up and down the timeline, and you can't help but think about the current. And I hate to say that like that because Arden is still missing as well. But I was speaking about Summer when I said current because, I mean, right now they're actively searching. And it's sad because you, you scroll through and you're just like, is this going to be Summer's page next time? You know, Xavier's page next time. It's been the boys' pages for six months. We don't always find them. Dead or alive. And that, that sucks. Hmm. So that was the first thing that hit me. But... What we're going to do is just take a little ride. Anybody that's available, hop right on in. <laughs> and I'm going to start as far back as I can. <sighs> and um, I'm going to try to tell Arden's story. time of this article, April 23rd, she had just gone missing on April 22nd. The search was underway near Browning for a missing three-year-old girl. Early Friday, Blackfeet Law Enforcement Services posted an attempt to locate message for three-year-old Arden Pepion. The alert says that she was last seen on Thursday at about 7 p.m in the vicinity of Joe Shaw East Road, off of US Highway 89. Arden was last seen wearing a purple jacket with a unicorn design on the front, a gray undersweater, black leggings, and black boots with green trim. Law enforcement officers, tribal leaders, and volunteers are searching the area, some on horseback. Blackfeet Law Enforcement Services say that it and several other law enforcement agencies are coordinating the search for Arden. 
They also said that they are thankful for the public's assistance in the search, but at this time do not need additional search crews. A separate phone number will be posted later for the public to call into for more information. Four long days for a family in Glacier County, three-year-old Arden Pepion was last seen in an area off Highway 89 last Thursday, April 22nd, around 7 p.m. Since then, search and rescuers have been working around the clock to find the little girl and bring her body home. MTN's Keely Van Middendorp has the latest. Search and rescuers continue to look for the body of a three-year-old girl near Browning. We've had some helicopters, drones, and things of that nature, divers, looking in the focus is the river right now, and so, and then still the area. Over the weekend, BIA and irrigation officials redirected river water from the Two Medicine into an irrigation ditch to lower water levels and assist searchers. Did divert quite a bit of water, and, and that, the diversion is about probably five or six miles west of where they're looking so it did help some. Soldiers and airmen from the Montana National Guard arrived Monday night, bringing with them more manpower and resources. Well, the, the bad thing about that area is the set lack of cell service and radio transmission, so we're, we're hoping to get that corrected here in the next day or two to try to have better, better reception for everyone. McNeely tells MTN they're not in need of any more volunteers. Around 150 people are involved in the recovery operation, with some staged at points of interest around the clock. They do have somebody continuously out there keeping an eye out throughout the night. At this time, authorities have not indicated that there was any sort of foul play involved. We'll, of course, update you as we find more. In Browning, Keely Van Middendorp, MTN News. Also tonight, the Blackfeet Nation in mourning. Nearly a month after three-year-old Arden Pepian went missing from her family home near Two Medicine, search crews still have not located the little girl. Arden's family continues looking for her, and as they do, they hosted a candlelight vigil tonight in Arden's name. And our Afika Sham joins us live from Government Square in Browning, where that service took place with help from volunteers. Afik, what was it like seeing the vigil firsthand? Ben and while it was mainly focused on spreading awareness of MMIP cases like Arden and countless others, there was also a touch of spirituality aimed at families who long to see their missing loved ones. Through songs and prayer, members of the Browning community came together to show support and compassion for the Pepion family, some already knowing the pain of losing people to MMIP. Because of the grief, stress and anxiety that comes with it, one speaker took the stage Oh, excuse me. One local and Blackfeet tri tribal member tells me the increasing number of cases has brought about fear and anxiety to people in the community. The Pepion family will continue to search for Arden tomorrow and be pushing for a better approach to handling MMIP cases. Live from Browning, Mafika Shah, Montana, right now. Okay, so let's take a look at the timeline for Arden. 22nd, she's missing. The 23rd of April, 438, a missing endangered persons advisory has been issued for three-year-old Arden Pepion. By the 24th, volunteers are being accepted. They have a post that they can check into. I'm just looking, that's the only real change on that day. So then we have an update here on the 25th. Now been missing three days. It says the search for a missing three-year-old on the Blackfeet Reservation has now turned into a search and recovery. Blackfeet Law Enforcement Services first, <clears throat> excuse me, asked for the public's help in locating Arden Pepion on Friday, April 23rd, two days ago. I mean, not ago, but ago in the story, right? A missing endangered person alert sent out the same day said Arden is three years old, 70 pounds, and is about two and a half to three inches 
in height, with dark brown hair and brown eyes. She was last seen wearing a purple jacket with uniform design on the front, a gray undersweater, black leggings, and black boots with green trim. Arden was last seen around 7 o'clock p.m. on April 22nd in the surrounding areas of Joe Shaw East, U.S. 89 South on the Black Peak Reservation. A search for Arden was coordinated between BLES and several other law enforcement agencies on April 23rd, and Joe Shaw East Road was temporary, temporarily closed to traffic. On April 24th, BLES put out a request on their Facebook at 8.53 a.m. for volunteers to help search for Arden. At 3.45 p.m., however, Blackfeet Joint Incident Command reported the search and rescue for Arden became a search and recovery. Based on the elements and the duration of time that has passed since she was last seen, we have come to realize that this is now a recovery. The post on the Blackfeet COVID-19 Incident Command Facebook says, as of the writing of this article, Arden has not been located and the MEPA has since expired. Foul play is not suspected as of now. Wow. Three days, that's all she got. Let's see what happened after that. Later on, still on the 25th, looks like about an hour and 45 minutes later. As of 4.30 p.m. April 25th, search and recovery efforts are still ongoing for three-year-old Arden Pepion. More search and rescue teams, as well as law enforcement agencies from across Montana, have joined the search Sunday. Civilians have asked to remain on standby for assistance. However, Blackfeet Joint Incident Command has said only law enforcement officials and designated search teams are working for now, according to the Blackfeet COVID-19 Incident Command. Okay, if you would like to send donations, Mabe Running, M-A-B-E, Running, like running, <laughs> Fisher, at 406-845-6168 or Denise Salois, 406-845-8100. I was checking to see if that money was going to Blackfeet because I could be wrong, but so far from what I'm reading, they didn't do hardly anything to find this baby. Three days later, it's a search and recovery. I disagree. But, you know, let's keep reading. Okay, so it says here, the search for missing three-year-old Arden Pepion has turned to a search and recovery due to cold weather conditions and the length of Arden's disappearance. PIO James McNeely for the Blackfeet Incident Command tells Montana right now. Okay, I'm calling bullshit on the amount of time. It's been three days. Okay, the weather... Maybe y'all have to put on some parkas or something and get on out there. I don't know, but but three days, absolutely not, not. Mm -mm. So you can take out the length of her disappearance as for why y'all stopped searching so soon. But let's keep reading. The Bureau of Indian Affairs is opening is opening the canal to reduce the water in two Medicine River as underwater divers are searching, as well as drones in the sky. At least 25 different state and local groups are taking part in efforts to find Arden, including deputies from Lewis and Clark County and Cascade County. They repeated that there was no need for volunteers. However, money and donations and things like that could be taken to sustain groups on the scene. Okay. Teams were planning to search through the night and into the morning and we'll regroup to discuss Monday, Monday morning. So that was the 25th of April. Uh, of course we know because we spoke that later on that day, 
the efforts were still ongoing. And then what happened? And now we have arrived at April 26th. She's been officially missing for four days. Search is going on in Glacier County. It's getting cold. I assume it's bitter cold out there. They look pretty chilly. I'll give them that. For four days? Sheesh. Get frosty as snow. At Jeep only, a certified pre-owned Jeep may be the... So oh, sorry. Frosty the snowman if you have to, but can't not give up. You absolutely can't after four days. I thought that was a typo or, or that I missed something when I first read that, but here we are on the 26th, Browning, and they confirm it. The effort to recover the body of three-year-old Arden Pepion southeast of Browning continued on Monday. She was last seen on Thursday, about 7 p.m. in the vicinity of Joe Shaw East Road off of U.S. Highway 89. The rescue effort was formally declared a recovery effort on Saturday. Officials said at the time that based on the elements and duration of time that has passed since she was last seen, we have come to realize that it is now a recovery. Can I just show y'all something that my brain went to? A, a calendar. She went missing on a Thursday right? April 22nd. Reported on the 23rd. And then we had the 24th where they put out the endangered alert. 25th, everybody was boots on the ground, boots on the ground. By the end of the 25th, it was a recovery due to weather. And as of the 26th, it's basically just a recovery due to the weather and how long she'd been missing Th this whole time right here from the second one okay let's do it right one two three four days four damn days they looked for this baby so i think we can all agree this story should at least be told my god i mean they have nobody, but <laughs> they do have something. Let me show you. But before I show you what they do have, let's talk about what really happened because it took all the way to May 18th for them to really tell the story. I mean, we've talked about a lot of stuff, right? The search, the rescue, but really heard from the parents not through any fault of their own from what i understand so far it's just how this thing was handled and i believe that the police department is crying you know um short staffing in their defense they did have another missing persons case pop up very close to the same time an adult um and we'll get to that so let's let's move on up the timeline to may 18th Browning in Glacier County. The parents of three-year-old Arden Artie Pepion are offering a reward for information that leads to their daughter. She was last seen on April 22nd at about 7 p.m. in the vicinity of Joe Show East Road off of U.S. Highway 89, several miles southeast of Browning. They told the news that they have a GoFundMe page and are funding the search for Artie along with a reward for valuable information. So I will put their GoFundMe link in the comments. They say their daughter had a big voice and a huge personality. The three-year-old and her siblings, two siblings, lived with their grandmother, but the couple says they were always in their children's lives. They're grateful for the amount of support that's come in from around the country and the world. Family is currently relying on trained volunteers and professionals who have aided in recovery efforts after officials scaled back the search.
Arbana says the lack of resources highlights a big problem for other missing and murdered indigenous persons, MMIP, families who have fought for help. It shouldn't have took Arden to shine a light on this reservation to show exactly what was missing, she said. I always knew that she had a big voice, but I didn't think it was going to be this big. Mm. Blackfeet Tribal Business Council member Mark Pollock says officials had to split up limited resources after 26-year-old Leo Wagner vanished five days later. Wagner has not yet been found. The couple says Artie disappeared while in her grandmother's care and that their two other children remain under her watch. MTN News has tried to contact the grandmother Blackfeet Law Enforcement Services, and Browning Child Protective Services. We have not heard back from any of them yet, and we'll update you as we learn more. Another situation where these agencies that are designed to work with you and protect and unify and what, what, what? You can't even return a phone call? Not one? The way this thing was rushed and swept under the rug. Yes, you had another case. Okay. And so you just drop Artie like she's hot? It's not cool. Not cool at all. But this is what happened. And this is why we haven't heard about Artie. They do have a beautiful Bring Arden Home Facebook um, group. It says where everyone can post information about Arden and for anyone that wants to post about those missing. Please no slander, defamation, or rumors or it will be removed. Thank you. You're welcome. Makes sense. So Please go over. As you can see, I just got here myself. I will gladly join to bring Arden home. And just go through their group and just see, get more familiar. Plus there's other stories of other missing children. This is just always sad when you see this. Bring Arden home. Facebook group, May 31st. In the picture, we have Pete W. Fuller on the left and Arbana Pepion, the mother of missing three-year-old Arden Pepion. And they've been searching for the young girl since her disappearance in April. My God, my God. Looking up at the cliffs stretching across the fields of the Blackfeet Reservation, Arbana Pepion recognized that in, as excuse me, an eagle's nest cradled in the rocks above. She said she's seen her three-year-old daughter, Arden, standing in the same nest in her dreams, fighting her somewhere. I want to get justice. I want answers, Arbana said, of her daughter's disappearance. Earlier this week, a team from the Missoulian traveled to Browning to search alongside and interview the family members of Arden, who had been missing since April 22nd. Arden Pepion, known as Artie, by friends and family, disappeared in the area surrounding Joe Shaw East off U.S. Highway 89 South. When Blackfeet law enforcement announced that they were scaling back their search for Arden on May 1st, her family began leading their own searches, hiring private investigation teams. Over the past month, conflicting accounts of what happened to Arden and frustration with how law, local law enforcement has handled Arden's disappearance have become prominent pillars of the case. Evidence from searches and information from the family and law enforcement point in different directions. On April 22nd, Arden was supposed to be in the care of Arbana's mother. Instead, she was believed to be with a family friend who was not her guardian, Arbana said. His name 
is Hayhox VL. In a recent phone interview with the Missoulian, VL confirmed he was with Arden the night she went missing. The two of them had spent time together beforehand and on the evening of April 22nd had gone to the two medicine area near Joe Shaw East to hang out and so he could practice shooting, VL said. She had been with me before when I was shooting, he added. He noticed Arden was missing while he was reloading his gun, he said. After looking around, he saw footprints of hers leading toward the river, starting about 40 to 50 yards from where the water was. Biel hmm. and his girlfriend searched for several hours, and then his girlfriend called law enforcement to report her disappearance, he said. In a Thursday press conference, Blackfeet law enforcement spokesman Frank Goings confirmed there was a five to six hour gap between when Arden went missing and when it was reported to officials. Law enforcement responded immediately when contacted, he added. Investigating officers found footprints believed to be Arden's leading to the river in their initial searches, he said. On April 25th, divers found a boot of Arden's in the river. Arden's family and search teams are still unsure about what exactly happened to Arden. Officials believe she drowned in the river, said Irene Pepion. Arden's paternal grandmother. She and Arbana think there is more to the story. I think if they found the boot, it seems like they should have found her body by now, Irene said. Where is she? Did she really go in that river? Family searching still. On May 1, Blackfeet law enforcement scaled back search efforts after less than two weeks. In the 10 days they had been investigating the area, they reported covering about 60 miles of land and river in the two medicine area. The family was authorized to hire a private company to continue investigative efforts. Pete W. Fuller, owner of Kento K9 LLC, was brought on to help the search. In the last few weeks, belongings of Ardens, separate from the boot found on April 25th, were found by the private teams in the wilderness areas a few miles away from the river, Arbana said. The sweatshirt she was wearing when she went missing has not been found yet. Arden was wearing a purple jacket with a unicorn design on the front when she went missing, according to the news release from Blackfeet Law Enforcement. Arden's family has said that information is incorrect and she instead was wearing a gray pullover sweater with the word Glacier printed across the front. Fuller's first day on the ground was Tuesday, May 18th, he said. The following day, a second private company with drones was brought on to help. Several of Arden's family members have also spent days out looking in different areas to try to find her body or clothing items. They've set up camps and have had help from volunteers. Support and donations from the local community have made continued search efforts for the family easier, Arbana said. Again, I will post the GoFundMe link you're pointing out right there. Fuller has spent the past few weeks searching the surrounding areas where Arden was last seen. He estimates having already covered dozens of miles, spanning from the Two Medicine River to the canal and with wilderness across the highway. I'm working for the family. I'm working for baby Arden, Fuller said. They have done grid searches for Arden, working in 500 foot circles in the two medicine area with one search and rescue dog and one cadaver dog, he said. Weather conditions have posed some challenges to their efforts, Fuller said. Some days they've been rained and snowed out, which makes accessing the area right around the river difficult. Weather also has impaired the dog's ability to smell things. But they're still out there, which is more than I can say for the local PD. Temperature rise and snow melts, Fuller said searching will become easier. Because the area she went missing from is an active spot for wildlife, namely mountain lions and bears, the possibility of her being lost to a cat or bear is strong too, Fuller said. Chasing our tails. 
Dissatisfaction with local law enforcement's handling of the case has left Arden's family feeling lost and confused. Fuller and the family have asked for answers and tangible information from Blackfeet law enforcement to help in their private searches, but have been given nothing, Arbana said. We'd like more background. We'd like a better timeline, Fuller said. They have us chasing our tails. Arden's parents were not notified of her disappearance, Arbana said. She found out through a family friend who sent her a web link to the announcement. When officials called off the search on May 1st, the family was again not directly notified. Thursday's press conference was the first public update on Arden's case since Blackfeet law enforcement called off the searches on May 1st. Arden's father, Aaron Pepion, points to a lack of training and organization in rescue and recovery efforts by law enforcement as hindering the effectiveness of their searches. He feels the people brought in to do the initial investigation were not properly trained for the kind of search mission this case entailed. They might have good intentions, but they need better training, Aaron said. We want to bring her home. We want our daughter home. Arden's family wishes an Amber Alert had been issued when she first went missing. Arbana thinks this would have helped raise awareness about her disappearance and possibly expedited the process of finding her. In their Thursday press conference, Blackfeet law enforcement said they did not believe Arden was abducted and her case did not meet the criteria for issuing an Amber Alert. They're planning on resuming some search efforts in the coming days. Blackfeet law enforcement did not return a request for comment from the Missoulian. Wow, they just shut it down and won't talk about it. That is, that's cold-blooded. That's really cold-blooded. At least give the people information. They pay for their own damn investigators and searchers. What's going on? Like, what are y'all hiding? What do you have to lose by telling them what you know? Interesting. Her own little personality. Described by her family as vibrant and playful, Arden was known for putting a smile on the face of anyone she meets. She really has her own little personality, Irene said. An avid lover of music, Arden was always bouncing around and finding new songs to dance to. When she wasn't at her preschool or with friends, she could be found trying to learn new TikTok dances with her older sisters, Alexis, Maxine, and Maddie. Arden was obsessed with anything related to the Disney movie Frozen and loved its music. The summer that also loved uh, Frozen? Oh, I know Dawn said she loved Godzilla, but I thought later it came out. Ever since she was a baby, she always listened to music, Arbana said. She was really bright for her age. Going forward, Arden's family wants justice and closure. Someone has to be held accountable, Irene said. How many times do we have to say that statement? VL has to be held accountable for her going missing. Remember, VL was the person that was last with her out shooting for some reason with this little girl, very little girl. Arbana wants Arden to be found and for the family to be able to hold a proper burial, she said. It's been harder for the family to grieve without a body. Arbana wishes Arden did not have to go missing for a light to be shed on the Blackfeet community's missing and murdered indigenous person rates and hopes her daughter's case can serve as an example in the future. Family and the private search companies plan to continue looking for answers until something more concrete has been found. I'm not going to give up, Arbana said. Love it. Now that's how you talk when you want your baby back and you don't know what happened. And that's what you do. I love this family. They're going hard for theirs, even when the 
police department gave up and that the weather was bad and they had all these reasons to stop looking for their baby, but they did not stop. They're still here. This is in May. Now, I read all that because I haven't found a lot of videos that actually highlight the story for you. So I had to give you the story in my own voice. But we are going to play a couple of these videos now, and it should make sense now that you've heard it all. Except for. She was always messing around with her, <laughs> messing around with her um, older sisters and mm -hmm. everything. It, mm -hmm. She might have been the smallest, but she was the bulliest. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, ever since she was a baby, she always, was always listened to music. She would watch her older sister Alexis, you know, try to do the dances and stuff. So she would try to do it too. Mm -hmm. Down at the, at the gravel pit, we have some evidence that gives us consideration that something did happen down there. We've, other than spent shells, we don't have anything. Our problem is we got all these stories, all this, some we know, we, and Bill, all of us agree, we got thrown off, you know. So what is happening, they've got yeah, us chasing our tail. That. We're chasing our tail right now somewhat. You know, we would like a little bit more background. We'd like a better timeline. Mm -hmm. we're, we're working off of these stories and inferences. Yeah, that's, that's the reason why we were asking, you know, why we, Irene and I were asking the police. Mm -hmm. And, you know, give us some answers, give us something to work with. Mm -hmm. How come they didn't update anybody when they called off the search? Mm -hmm. And why did they search for so long and then have everybody out here and then just automatically just say oh we're going to take a break for two days and then we'll come back mm -hmm. but never did mm -hmm. you know not everybody knows this country down here mm -hmm. and I think they should have had somebody at least with every t search team they had So I just wanted to check out the Montana Amber Alert criteria. And it says here, to activate the program, all of the following criteria must be met. There is reasonable belief by law enforcement that a child has been abducted or has disappeared under suspicious circumstances. I would say check for Arden. I mean, she's three, and she just disappeared from her grandmother's. That's suspicious, no? Anyway, the missing child is age 17 years or younger, check, or has a proven mental or physical disability that we don't know. But this makes me question why an Amber Alert wasn't put out as well. And they were getting questions from the community about this, so... That's why I wanted to look into it. Why didn't she get an Amber Alert? Is it not suspicious for a little girl to disappear from grandma's? And the parents don't know where she is. No one knows. Is that, I don't know. And what's up with grandma? Don't get me started. Oh, but it's too late. Now, for the big kicker. Much like baby Joe Daniels. We have charges, but no, no body, unfortunately, not no body. And they're not charging them with murder. It's, it's in connection with her disappearance. So as of yet, since we haven't read, we don't know if they expect murder or whatnot, but this was a name that mom 
dropped earlier and she knew and he admitted he was with Arden the last night before she went missing hanging out at like shooting like she was an adult or something the way I read it like what were you even doing with her and grandma why the hell did you let him take her we there's got to be more to this well if grandma lets her three-year-old granddaughter go out with some dude to go shooting at that in the woods I, I I'm confused but it says ha hox VL that was the person that was um suspected and Kimberly Higgins charged in connection with the disappearance excuse me of three-year-old Arden Pepion pleaded not guilty on Wednesday in Blackfeet tribal court hmm Arden was last seen on April 22nd in the vicinity of Joshaw East Road off of U.S. Highway 89, several miles southeast of Browning. At the time, she was with VL. Ah, oh, her uncle. He's her uncle. Okay, so not random. They didn't mention that. I At least I didn't catch that before. They were reportedly practicing shooting. She's three now. When VL noticed that Pepion wasn't near him, he saw her footprints leading to the river, which was about 50 yards away. So she just walked into the river, made no noise, no sound, even when she was drowning, no help, uncle, nothing. Or did you accidentally shoot that baby? Or worse, I don't know what your history looks like, but accidental shooting when you're out doing that kind of thing, free range, shooting um it can happen prosecutors allege that bl did not notify law enforcement of her disappearance for several hours that makes you suspect number one why wouldn't you as soon as you saw those little footprints nine one one i'm calling bullshit on the uncle prosecutors confirmed to mtn news that bl is charged with negligent endangerment and child neglect for failing to adequately supervise Pepion in potentially dangerous conditions. BL's failure to notify authorities in a reasonable amount of time and then leaving and returning to the scene were factors in the child neglect charge. So, yeah. Uh, I, I just, right here, returning to the scene. Who does that? Who does that? Hmm. No, who does that? Higgins said. Uh, Higgins said to be VL's girlfriend is charged with accountability. Hmm. For failing to notify authorities in a reasonable amount of time after becoming aware that Epion was missing in dangerous conditions. Absolutely. I love the accountability. But where is she? What did they say? A formal search for Pepion lasted 10 days, but searchers only found footprints leading to the Two Medicine River and a boot believed to be hers in the river. The search since has been scaled back, but people continue to volunteer to search for her. Lord, she could literally be anywhere based on the terrain that I saw. Arden Pepion is her name, everyone. Here's a little peek at Ha Hox VL, his Facebook page. Him and his loving girlfriend, Kimberly Higgins. The last two people to see Arden alive. See a couple people reaching out. Where is Arden? What did you do to her? Hmm. Didn't mean to hit that button. Actually, I wanted to see this. Because what the hell is this? He says it's an auntie making dry meat. The metal sculpture of a native making dry meat. Mm. Okay, because hmm, that looked a little 
suspect to me. There's another one if I can you get back where I was because this. Mm. It was 2019. So he likes to play in the woods. Not good. He, he could have a lot of hiding places there. Anyway, him and his girl were the last two to see Arden alive. In Glacier County, the parents of three-year-old Artie Pepian are offering a reward for information that leads to their daughter. Arbana and Aaron Pepian told MTN News donations from a GoFundMe page are funding the search for Artie along with a reward for valuable information. They say Arden, who preferred to be called Artie, had a big voice and a huge personality. The three-year-old and her two siblings lived with their grandmother, but the couple says they were always in their children's lives. They're grateful for the amount of support that's come in from around the country and the world. The family is currently relying on trained volunteers and professionals who have aided in recovery efforts after officials scaled back the search. Arbana says the lack of resources highlights a big problem for other MMIP victims' families who have fought for help. It shouldn't have took Arden to shine a light on this reservation to show exactly what was missing and, you know, I always knew that she had a big voice. I didn't think it was going to be this big. And Blackfeet Tribal Business Councilman Mark Pollock says officials had to split up limited resources after 26-year-old Leo Wagner vanished five days later. The couple says Artie disappeared while in her grandmother's care and that their two other children remain under her watch. MTN News reached out to that grandmother, Blackfeet Law Enforcement Services, and Browning Child Protective Services. We have not heard back yet and will update you as we learn more. A search for three-year-old Arden Pepion of the Browning area has turned into a recovery operation as authorities continue to look for her. She was reported missing on Friday. MTN's Cassandra Soto takes us to the recovery efforts. Blackfeet Homeland Security and rescue teams have descended on the Two Medicine River, lowering water lines Sunday morning to help with visibility as the search for three-year-old Arden continues. The uh, search has been going on. We are on day three and a half right now. On April 23rd, authorities got a call about Arden Pepeon's disappearance after family members noticed she was gone around 7 Thursday evening. Now a multi-agency task force ranging from foot, water, and air teams are working together to comb Two Medicine River. There was uh, a report at, at one time of, of uh, shoot tracks going that way and so that's kind of was their their lead into looking at there so um, it was snowing that night when when this when she disappeared so that's why they're they're utilizing that right now because of the proximity of the house to the river the teams consist solely of trained search and rescue officers at this time their recovery efforts have spent a 10 mile stretch of river so far right now we have close to 100 volunteers that are here from other agencies that are trained to do this it's not that I didn't want all of the community volunteers. It's the fact that where we're pointing, you know, our searches, we kind of need more of the trained people coming in and assisting with that. Though community members may not be able to assist in the search on the river, a group of Blackfeet women have set up what they call a cook shack for those on the search to get a hot plate of food, all from community donations. We're all family here. We, we're close-knit, you know, the Blackfeet people, we come together as a community when in time of need and especially at the time when we, we're having a crisis. Everybody feels for this child. She's an innocent baby. You know, we all want to come out and help and bring her home. In Browning, Cassandra Soto, MTN News. Blackfeet authorities say they will keep looking however long it takes. But they didn't keep on looking for as long as it took. I just showed you our calendar where they had already scaled back by day four. And it looks like the search was officially called off May 1st. That would have only been, what, nine days later? So they didn't keep looking.
But again, the parents have paid for their own searchers and investigators, and someone is still looking. And now guess what? We're looking too. For details, clues, and for Arden. I mean, look at this, look at this. One like 34 views. We have to spread the word. We have to spread the word together. It has now been one month and a day since three-year-old Blackfeet girl Arden Pepione went missing. She apparently walked away from her home near Browning, and a search of a nearby river failed to find her. MTN's Cassandra Soto tells us about one business making a donation to help feed those continuing to search. It started with the donation of an injured bull from a family in Valier. Now CNC Meat Processing is donating over 250 pounds of hamburger to the Pepeone and Wagner families to help keep their searchers fed. Everybody needs help once in a while. Traditionally, it takes a tribe to take care of our community. Each family was given just over 125 pounds of ground beef that will go into hot meals out on the search. We have to stick together. We're a group. And that's how it was back in the old days. You know, we always took care of each other. And that's why I think that's what we need now more of. They're locals, which is great, you know. It's just people helping out people, you know, our families helping out families. The donation helps prepare the families to continue the search efforts solely with help of local volunteers. We are on our own, um, uh, me and my family and um, the community, we're all going to get together and we're all going to go out and search for my loved one, our loved one, and go from there and we're not going to stop until we do. For the owner of CNC Meat Processing, using her business to donate is the one way she can help give the families one less worry as they search for their loved ones. This donation is about taking care of each other from the family that donated it to the my family and all the families it's gonna feed. This hopefully will bring more people to these searches to help look for these ones that are lost. We all struggle, but to know that you're not struggling alone and somebody's watching to help, that's what we're here for. In Bab, Cassandra Soto, MTN News. Well, we're not giving up hope. That was the message from the Blackfeet Reservation's police chief today at a virtual news conference to update the public on the search for Arden Pepion. As we've reported, the three-year-old girl went missing on the reservation late last month. For the first time today, we learned Arden was last seen with her non-custodial uncle. Blackfeet law enforcement says, quote, based on the totality of circumstances, unquote, Arden is believed not to uh, not to have been abducted. A formal search lasted 10 days, but was only able to find footprints leading to the Two Medicine River and a boot believed to be hers in the river. The search has since been scaled back, but people continue to volunteer to search for the missing girl. We are gonna do a little search today. We're gonna continue. We're gonna make those promises that we are gonna continue searching with the hope and the prayers, because we all know this reservation, how we come together is through prayer. Blackfeet law enforcement said an update on the search for Leo Wagner, who went missing shortly after Arden, may be provided in the near future. So this is our newest baby, Arden. And I guess I want to put a twist to it, Pepion, but I believe the news reporter said Pepion. Either way, she liked to be called Artie. So we'll call her Artie. And we'll stay tuned because we need to know if these two suspects are the actual culprits and what happened to Artie. We literally don't know. But the search is pretty much over, except for what the family is doing. And we need to know what happened, baby Artie. Artie Pepion. 
say her name. And until next time, beautiful people, kiss your babies and hold them tight. Please hit the like button for Artie, not for me. Put her in the algorithm. Put her in the Google searches. Put her in the YouTube searches because I've shared with you almost everything out there. And that wasn't a lot. Find Artie. right here on Wake Up Montana. The Browning community came together last night to show support for the family of a missing three-year-old, Arden. She first went missing about a month ago, and right now, Afik Asham, he's there, and he spent the evening with them. Afik, you spent some time communicating with the family. What have you learned about this case, and what's the family saying this morning? Bradley, the people I spoke to at the vigil last night tell me they feel frustrated with Arden Pepian now becoming Browning's youngest victim of the MMIP epidemic. During the vigil, volunteers planted signs carrying the names and faces of roughly 50 lost loved ones who were never found or never got justice for their deaths. For every thousand people, Glacier County got 3.14 reports of people who go missing for the first time in recent years, with underage youth like Arden making up 80% of missing people statewide, according to the Department of Justice. It's scary, you know, to think about that kind of stuff because, you know, my, my girls, they're still growing up. They're still young. Arden didn't even get to live. She was just starting her life. She was barely even going to school. Both Arbana and Aaron plan on working with small groups of crews and volunteers as they continue searching for their missing daughter. They do have a GoFundMe set up with a goal of $2,000 to help searchers with food and supplies moving forward. Live from Browning, I'm Afika Sham, Wake Up Montana. Afik, thank you.